Well, salutations, kindred spirits. Here we are. It's the trick card deep dive. That's what we're doing today, card tricks, and we're going to learn some. This is definitely a goal of mine today. Have a nice teach-in session. Going to teach you an original trick, a piece from my book, little known and hardly seen version of the fusion plot. We're going to get to that in a bit. Full disclosure, it is going to be a card heavy stream today so i thought i'd start with something that's not that's not cards i've been recently enamored with cube magic again i did this i did this routine on the shorts platform and i had some people they're accusing me of doing nefarious things like camera tricks and cgi and and edits so i figured i'd take the time to do this one live for you on the platform you guys see what this looks like live so here we are the instant cube solve it looks something like this just takes a minute to solve this thing completely what that looks pretty good even live not cgi this is my new muse the rubik's cube you'll be seeing more of that as time goes on on this stream let me say hello to the kindred spirits david oh i saw you hanging around pre-stream good to see you david Kingo, howdy. Marty, welcome back and howdy. Gary, good to see you again. A lot of members are here. They were just with me an hour ago. We did a little unboxing review session. In fact, that cube was one of the things we looked at. And if you would like to look at that as well, well, maybe you should be a member. Support the cause and uh, you can learn a little extra stuff. But we are going to learn stuff today. Here's, here's our subject matter. Let's check our other camera, make sure our sound's working. Okay, so do we need this camera? Let's hope not. It's horrible. But if we do, it's there. Is the sound on here? It is as well. And now we're ready da, 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 to roll. So yeah, we're going to talk about some of the cards focus in my handcrafted gaffed card assortment. This is a uh, homebrewed project of mine. But before we talk about the things that are in there, things that you might need as a budding magi i thought hey let's do some magic with the props that we're going to talk about this is an interesting one here these are forgery cards forgery cards sounds mystical huh this is that'll make a nice forgery these are the gaffs these are the trick cards as we say in the biz forgery cards they look like they look like uh blank faced bicycle cards but i have other purposes for them to demonstrate these purposes, we'll need to lay them in the traditional wild card pattern established by Frank Garcia back in the early 80s. That's a what, face up, face down, face up, face up, face down, face up. Yeah, I think that's the traditional wild card pattern. This, this doesn't feel right, but we're going to roll with it as I introduce the forgery card. This is the one with my signature on it. And using forgery paper, you can make an exact duplicate. For example, if I just do this and do this, you give it a second and you get an exact match of the, well, it's maybe not an exact match, but it probably passed muster at the bank. So if you wanted to go forge a check or something like that, let's get another one here. You just rub it around. It, only, it just takes a second for the, yeah, see, it just takes a second. The forgeries, they start happening. Here, pay close attention to the situation here. That's the front of the forgery paper. That's the back. You just rub it on the others, and then you get an exact, a pretty good match. Maybe not, maybe not exact, but pretty good. All right, so what's that? Two down, four, four to go. One, two, three, four. Let's speed these up a little bit. I'll just rub these here. Takes a second to dry them. You get a couple of duplicates here. You put these on top of those, and this is the this is the magic of forgery paper. And this, truth be told, is what we call the wild card routine, the wild card. This is a plot that was introduced to the magic community by, it's really uh, Peter, K Peter Kane gets the credit, but Frank Garcia put it on the map. The version you just saw was uh, Shigeo Takagi's, Whew. Japanese master Shigeo Takagi. I wanted to demonstrate a version of the wild card because it is one of the Props, the cards needed, come inside this 
gaff card assortment. We're going to open the gaff card assortment. I'm going to show you what comes in here, talk about some of the things that you can do, some of the tricks that are available. I am not going to discuss the method for this particular routine, but as a kindness, as a kindness, right before this stream, I did a tutorial, an unlisted tutorial for the Takagi forgery, the wild card handling you just saw. That is in the description below. So if you want to if you got the cards you need and you want to go learn that sequence, in addition to some other tricks I'll be talking about, you're going to find this on the uh, in the description. You'll find that tutorial. So uh, Z2Nice asks, is this deck on your site? It is. Let me see if I'm prepared to show that. Is there a, is there a world where I can share? I've got this up. This is the bundle that I'm offering. This is all the gaff cards. So you get all of these. I'm gonna open this deck in a minute. And then you get uh, also the weapons bundle in this. I guess if you just want the gaff cards, it's this, it's 15 bucks. And it's uh, all the important ones. Here, let's stop poking around here and I'll open the thing up and then we can, we can look at it live and in color. So what I do is bu buy a bunch of, of gaff cards and I reinvent, I redistribute them. And I do this because when I was a young man, I used to be able to buy a deck like this and get a nice variety of gaff cards that I could use without having to buy all of these decks individually. So this is why I'm offering this, this package. Oh, plus I'm gonna give one away. What? Yes, in the, speaking of giving away, here's Jason with the super sticker. And uh, that's the birthday boy giving back. Thanks, man. Thank you, JY. Uh, but yeah, we're going to give away one of these. It'll happen on next Wednesday, Wednesday stream. So every Wednesday at four o'clock for the next two months, I'm going to be live on YouTube doing giveaways every week, I think. So I don't see why that will change. If you want to win a gaff pack, then just use the word gaff in a comment in the, in, of this video. Don't comment on the side. Comment below so that the algorithm thinks something interesting is happening. I'm gonna give away the bundle package. You're gonna get a weapons deck. You're gonna get the gaff assortment and a matching bike, a matching bike deck. Here's what's in the assortment. So you get 10 blank face cards. A lot you can do with a blank face card. For example, you could do the Takagi, you could do the Takagi forgery routine. These are commonly supplied with bicycle decks. And there's a reason they, they supply blank facers. It's a valuable tool. Now these are double backers. And I'm going to demonstrate a trick using one of these. The trick we're going to teach today is, yeah, it's a gaff. Gaff. G-A-F-F. -F, gaff. We're going to describe a trick using double facers. A lot you are double, double backers. A lot you can do with that. You get 10 of those in this package. Double blanks, double blanks. These are also what I use for the forgery routine. All things, all kinds of things you can do with double blank cards. In fact, I was just talking with Nate Cranzo today. This is their topic of Penguin Magazine next month. I gave him a routine for print. That's going to be in the Penguin Magazine. If you're a Penguin shopper, you'll get that next month. And these are red, blue, double backers. I put 10 of those in here. These are most commonly used to change a selected card from red to blue, but you could do color changing decks. There's a lot of, lot, of way, lot of ways to use a red blue double backer. And then we get to the meat, to the value here. This is the, these are the goods that you'll use the most. This is a set of McDonald's aces. These are double facers. And typically the McDonald's aces gaff only uses these three but some of them use a fourth one. I thought about doing the McDonald's aces today, but it is a routine I've performed on here. Yeah, that's a good point, Nathaniel. Prediction effects. Yep, absolutely. So McDonald's aces are in here, all four of them as well. I include two same both sides. This is a same both sides gaff because it's the same on both sides. Clever, huh? There's not a lot of use for these, but I only include two of them. So that's what those are. Maybe you need it. Maybe you won't. A couple of double-faced jokers. 
There's value here in having a regular card on the back of a Joker, and you get two of those. And then I include also two low-valued double-face pip cards for something, say you're doing anniversary waltz. I just think that a low-valued double-face pip card, and here we're looking at a three and a two and a two and a three, these have good value. If you want to just do a standard wild card, say you want to do wild card, but you don't want to do the forgery routine, or maybe you do stand up Monty. Well, every one of my gaff card assortments also include four double facers that are court cards on one side and spot cards on the other side. So for like the routine with the signatures where all of those changed, I could substitute these cards and a few duplicate Queens and I could just use that same effect to produce the wild card. And then the Myco gaff. I had to include this in here as it's really, they're not like le legitimate gaffs, but they're unique cards. And I've used this gaff. This is a great trick. Hey, I'll tell you what I've done. Uh, I've done a tutorial on the Myco gaff there. I left it in the links below. There's descriptions with links in the thing. Go look at that. The Myco description. I also listed the blank Monty. This is a good use for a few blank cards. And then you'll find the Tatagi forgery routine in there as well. And that's all waiting for you post stream. All right, let's, John says it's a deal. This is one heck of a deal. I, I picked up a wild card set for the same price. Yeah, that's right. It's a deal. So yeah, I tried to give value. I tried to do it with everything I sell at conjure.com. Boink, if you don't know, that's the site. I need to mention it because no one else will. All right, so now you have maybe a little more information about these gaff cards than you had before. Now, let's take a look at an original piece that you might be able to put to use. And really, this one only uses two cards. Let's not talk too much about it before I do the thing. Here, let me, what am I going to use for this? Here, let's first come, we're going to bust out these turners. We're still using the Gary, Gary Henderson gifted Richard Turner gold seals, and we're enjoying them. Now, this, as, uh, did I mention, this was, I think I did, this was published in the book, Tricks in My Trade. This trick at its best really needs a couple spectators to pick cards. Now, in the uh, interest of efficiency, I'm going to choose the cards for you. In real life, they'll be forced. And uh, Nathaniel, those are the Turner cards. And, oh, they're good. And David, stay tuned right now. All right, here we go. So uh, a mixed deck of cards. And again, uh, I would just force one on you. So in the interest of efficiency, we're just going to take the Three of diamonds. I'll also need a pen here. Three of diamonds. You have to mark the card. You have to write down what it is on the back because by the end of this, you won't know. So I'm just putting a three and a D. That stands for three of diamonds because by the end of this, you won't be able to tell what the, what the card is. So we'll need a second selection. Again, if you were here, I would force one on you. It would probably be a low spot card. This will be a good one. The eight of clubs, the eight of clubs, which will also mark with an eight and a C, the eight, the eight of clubs. And that's so you could tell the difference between the three. All right. So here we go. Keep your eye on the, on the two cards. Let me do it this way. There's a few ways that you could handle this prop. A lot of guys will do it back to back where they take the two back-to-back -back cards. But I like to do it face-to-face. -face. So I'm going to put the three on the face of the eight. And again, this would be best with a spectator. I would, I would hand them the cards to hold in their hand, maybe two hands, maybe more. They apply a little pressure, and in their hands, those two cards fuse into one playing card and that is a single card there's no glue there's no sticky stuff that's why this why this trick really does need a spectator here to appreciate the moment and that's my handling of the fusion plot the fusion plot uh most popularized by 
Christopher Carter, I think, was the one that introduced this plot. But Doc Eason and uh, Garrett Thomas, Doc Eason mainly popular, popularized this plot. There's a free download on Murphy's site if you're interested in the anniversary waltz. You can go to Murphy's Magic and learn more about the uh, anniversary waltz. And this is a plot that I would recommend for public performance. The method we're about to look at offers a lot of advantages, but I don't know if it's better than the anniversary waltz, but we'll heed the details and maybe we'll all learn something as we do. Note that when I do this trick, I think it's good also, I would tear this in half and give half to each spectator so that each of them have a piece of the puzzle per se. And they can also appreciate in doing so that this is not a, a glued together double card. So, all right, let's talk about what you'll need to do this trick. You'll need a double backer and you'll need a double facer. So this should be accessible for most viewers. A double backer is a pretty common gaffe and a double facer as well. If you want to practice it, you could probably just glue cards together and, and work it out that way. So here we go with, uh, yeah, Marty, that free download is worth watching. I'll tell you what, guys, if you want to add a good piece of working magic to your repertoire, go watch the free download from Murphy's, the anniversary waltz down downloaded. So yeah, thank you, Marty. I, I do have a lot of convincers in my version, and I think what you would need, not the romantic overtones, just a different presentation point of view. And if I have full disclosure, I haven't performed this trick in 20 years. I gave this trick to Paul Cummins for the book and then anniversary waltz got popular and I quit performing this version of the trick. So this is waiting to be rediscovered, reanalyzed, maybe retooled, and maybe we could find a working audience for, for this piece. All right. So as mentioned, the two gaffes, the double backer, the double facer, and then you'll need the one card. You don't need both of these, just one card that matches the double facer. And that card is third from the top. So there's the eight of clubs, third from the top. Above that, the double facer with the three downmost or the matching the card here, uppermost. And then the double backer on top of this. Now, in my book, I suggest it's possible that you hold these out. They could be in your pocket, et cetera. The deck is in play. Maybe your spectator is shuffling the deck. And when you're ready to perform this trick, you just add this block on top of the deck and you don't have to palm it. They could be under the card box. You know, they could be out here hanging under the card box, pick up the card box, drop it on top. And this is a way to get the routine started from a shuffled deck if you need that information. So a riffle, a riffle force would work. There's lots of options for forcing the card. Like you could just say, just say stop. This is a John Bannon handling. And then we want to execute a double turnover here. So I'm going to turn over two cards as one as I bring the three of diamonds side of the double facer into view. So we execute our force. This is a riffle. They say stop. I'm going to kick it over, tap, and then do a double turnover here. I don't even know if this needs a force. You just, <laughs> you need to double turn over the card, turn it back down. And then on the back of the card, write your word. I'm suggesting three of diamonds or 3D, but maybe you're going to write the spectator's name. That would be, a, maybe they sign the card. You could have the spectator sign it. I like to blow on it here. This is where I establish my break for the double. I like to use the pinky count, counting the cards off the tip of my pinky like this. So as I'm blowing on the card, I'm getting a break for the double turnover. When that comes back in the view, I turn the double and I deal the single card face up to the table and then drop this back on top. So now we have our single side of the double facer on the table. And on top of the deck, we have the signed double backer lowermost and below that, the next selection. In the performance, I used my double play production to produce the double face up. This is just one of the ways that I handle a double after establishing the break. So that's what I used in performance. But however you do it, you do a double turn the double face down, and then you write the name of that card on the back of what is now the double backer. So now we have both cards signed here. We're going to apparently show them, we have both signatures on one card there. We're going to apparently show them as two separate cards through the wild card move. This is actually one of the procedures from that Takagi wild card handling. As we scoop up the three, we turn this over 
to show what is apparently the back of the three, but it's the back of the double facer of the double backer. So I say, there's the three, there's the eight. And this is the old wild card move. It gives the impressions of two cards separated. This is a definite bonus for my handling as both cards are seen in the vicinity and separate. Bring the cards to the pack. As you do so, you're going to establish a break under that regular card on the top of the pack. And then you can lift everything. You're going to lift all three cards above the break, which allows you to show the face card now. So again, if this is unclear, I'm, I'm in this position showing this in this position. As I bring them to the top, I get a break under the top card and I lift all three cards above the break. Show this. Peel the top card. Or you could do this first. You could back jog one and show this as well if you like. Just don't spread too far. Then when you're ready to make the fusion, peel the top card with your thumb onto the top of the deck and then just drop everything except the top card. So we're going that'll cover up the double facer. As we bring this into view to show this side, everything is copacetic as it should be. We invite our spectators to hold the cards and put a hand on top and a hand on top. Give it a, mo a minute for the moment to happen and then have them experience the magic. They'll find both signatures welded together. And then again, as recommended, rip that thing in half and give one piece to each spectator. And that, that is Khan's Fusion, as originally printed in Tricks of My Trade. John Rockerbomber might have published that beforehand in like a magic zine or something like that. But that's your tutorial du jour. I'll open the forum here for a... Uh, little Q and A if anybody needs a little extra information about that trick. And then I'll be happy to talk about anything that you would like to. John seems to think I got it right. Note, as I mentioned, this is not in my active repertoire, so I'm winging it. Hey GB, thanks for popping in brother. And, and noted that even if you don't do that routine as I kind of broke it down. I think the pieces of that puzzle could be redistributed different ways. James wants to talk about lapping. Wow, that's a topic that we could talk about, but maybe one that I'm not like an expert in. What do I say about lapping? Uh, you know, I, I say this, as with all magic, the audience's attention is paramount. How are, how are you directing their attention when you're executing that lap? That's the most important. Yeah, I do. Slidini. If you study, there's a few books, but the best one are the Carl Fulves tomes. It's two volumes, one's pictures, one's text, and you study what Slidini had to say about the subject. I could mention random things, but if you really want to break down how to approach lapping, there's the master. Slidini and Carl Folds wrote the books. <clears throat> You're welcome, James. <laughs> yes. That's right. Cats are great at lapping also. Thank you for that, John. Your double lift is horrible. Well, practice more. Yeah, you can buy a whole deck of double backers if you'd like. Those are available. You can certainly do that online. Alfredo wants to know what I'm studying now. I'm kind of deep diving into the Rubik's Cube these days, so I got a lot going on with that. <clears throat> Marty says Roy Benson was a lapper. Oh, that's news to me. Yeah, if you want to get real crazy, here's a great a bit of advice from James. You can make all of these gaffes by yourself. They involve taking the card. You're literally going to split the card down the middle, separating the three layers. That's what a card is made of, three layers. Then you get yourself some good glue and a little time and care, and you can make all these gaffes on your own at home. There's tutorials on this subject out there. I encourage you to do so. Thank you, Chris. 
I was happy to revisit this today. You know, I wanted to talk about trick cards. I wanted to show a couple of routines that haven't been showcased on here. And when I thought hmm, maybe I could revisit this thing, I was actually pretty happy with this 20 year old construction. I think it still has merit. I'm glad you enjoyed it. How do I remember everything? Uh, I think it just is because I care. But I don't know. If I have any superpower, it's that one. Ah, there we go. James makes all his own. Good on you, brother. Yeah, there are a lot of Rubik's Cube things. I'll tell you, I'm most interested in skill-based skill things. You guys saw me do something that wasn't skill-based to open this stream. I am never locked down to one method, but I am interested in some of the uh, in particular, the Asian masters. There's a lot of great Asian Rubik's Cube stuff. Okay, there's a there's a Russian genius does a really good du double backer tutorial. We like the Russian genius. Go watch him and learn. <laughs> oh, Grindel. I didn't recognize you from your... Uh, Punk Rock Pepperhead screen name. There you are. There you are in the thumbnail, though. Yeah, anniversary waltz is you know, it's like SpongeBob magic for cards is what it is. It provides a strong emotional moment with a hands-on experience. As far as a card trick goes, it's hard to beat, and it's it's one often chosen for like wedding moments where the focus is on the bride and the groom, and you want it to make it look good and you know, it's an important card trick in my lifetime. So y'all go learn the anniversary waltz. Yeah, that's right, Marty. The other type of algorithm. I'm, I'm, I'm back in it. I used to solve these things with, with some efficiency about 10 years ago. So I'm kind of relearning. What's my favorite type? My favorite coin trick. Uh, chink -a chink Shadow Coins. The Matrix. Terry, you're you're quite welcome. Uh, you know, I'm assuming a role here that I'm hoping more kindred spirits will join me, a place where some guys with knowledge need to share our knowledge with the play, with the place where people learn. In other words, people learn on YouTube now. Now, who do you want teaching them? That's my question. So yeah, hopefully some other kindred spirits with massive knowledge will join us as well. Well, Pro Basil, we did a couple of gaff card tricks and Rubik's Cube trick. You're up to speed. Fortunately, these streams stay up for post-stream perusal. So you can go uh, watch it afterwards. I'll just leave it hanging around. Hanging around. Let me re-say re for those of you that have skipped to the end watching post-stream and want to know how to win stuff. In the comment section of this video, you're going to want to leave the words gaff card. This. Those words, not assortment, just gaff card. Next week, anything with the words gaff card, they'll be put on the wheel of names. And I'm going to draw a winner for that gaff card package. <clears throat> Good luck, everyone. Ed McGowan in the house. Ed. Ed, Florida's on my radar again next year. I'll be there in January. I'm going to find you, if not sooner. Timing is everything and no penalties. Thanks for popping in, Bill. Good to see you, brother. I guess I could mention that tonight I'm going to be guest hosting a Conjurer community event. Bill Goodwin is lecturing for the uh, Conjurer Community Club, Aaron Fisher's Jam, Adam Grace. We love Bill Goodwin. This guy is a genius with the deck of cards. Looking forward to being on the panel for that event. Oh, Gary's down there too. Look, Gary, I forget. You got to, I'm going to be in Florida. You need to come to the convention in Orlando. That's what I meant to say. You're close to that. The golden, the Gator Gate gathering. Yes, I will be on there tonight. Steve Reynolds will probably be there too. Mr. G. Welcome back to my magic party. Yes, Greg Petty's doing the doing the work as well. He's putting in the, the consistency. 
All right. Guys, this is my this is my 30 minutes. You know, I try to keep these things palatable, consumable post stream, keeps the algorithm happy. So I'm going to do a loose wrap up at this point. We will re-mention as well as the prize that da, 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 we are doing lives every Wednesday at 4 p.m. If you missed this one this week, I'll be back next week at this time. And Mr. G, you're going to want to mention Gaff Card in the comments section after the video where everyone makes the comments below. All right, y'all. I'm not going to blabber endlessly. We're wrapping this up. Thanks for hanging out with me. I'll see you guys next Wednesday. And I'll have something for you to look at, at Friday. I'm going to have to get, get creative, so I don't know what that is. Hey, if you missed the stream, it's going to be up afterwards. Just, uh, you know, review, and it'll be there for you. Got a lot going on today, guys, so I got to go get on to the next thing, and I'm going to do that now. Uh, yeah, doing it. Ciao for now. Bye.